<laughs> hey, you may think the world of Hollywood hit movies and your food product have little in common, but the success of the recent Barbie movie holds a treasure trove of marketing insights and strategies uh, for your food product. Stick around and I'll show you how to apply the strategies of a Hollywood blockbuster to transform your food business into the next big hit. Hey, I'm happy to talk to you today about the, the Barbie movie. And there's so many lessons there. The first one is just think about, I want to share with you the marketing budget. They budgeted $150 million to marketing, whereas the movie itself only cost $145 million to make. Uh, when I say that, it just it cracks me up. But the point being is think about the ratio. They're spending more on marketing than they are the actual product. And so for food entrepreneurs, I want to ask you, are you even spending money? Do you even have a marketing, advertising, and promotion budget? Are you putting anything into communicating the value of your product to consumers? Do you have a relationship with, with consumers? So many food entrepreneurs uh, that, I, that I meet and that I know and that I see doing business, they think of marketing as getting on the shelf. They think they've done their job. Their whole idea, their, their claim to fame is to get on a shelf, and that's their marketing budget. But that's the wrong way to think about it. That's not the way to defend your position. And particularly, I've seen it often. I've been involved with it before of where I'm working with an innovative entrepreneurial product and we spend nothing on, there's very little to nothing on marketing. And there's no way for us we're not defending our product. So what happens? So there's two big competitors. And sometimes you may not even realize it. Uh, legacy brands are going to, it's going to take them some time, but they're going to be introducing their product that's going to be competing with you. It, it might be two years down the road, 18 months uh, before they have something um, out there. But they are going, particularly if, if you have an innovative item and you, the most important piece is you've discovered a segment of the market that they're not supplying and that becomes a large enough segment, they're going to be competing with you uh, for that consumer. Uh, the other piece that is uh, was shocking the first time this happened, uh, introducing an innovative product, uh, we've the number one thing is we've discovered or we understand a need in the category that's not being supplied, and we begin to meet that need, and we're very successful at it. So not only do you have competitive, competitive legacy brands, but oftentimes, and likely much more quickly, you're going to have competitors, you're going to have your retailer is going to become your competitor. They're going to introduce white label, private label. They're going to in introduce their own brand of product to compete with you for that consumer. That's just what, it ha what happens. When you do not have the moat of advertising around your product in a direct relationship with the consumers, and you're not building that endearing fan base uh, with shoppers and with consumers for your product, you're going to be unable to defend it. You're just simply bringing commodity almost uh, with your product when it's just a packaged product that you share with them. It's just a product that's easy, much easier to knock off, much easier to take away your, your clients, much easier to gain that business by simply offering a store brand or a competitive legacy brand. And so that that is the, the number one lesson uh, from the movie would be you've got to have a marketing budget. You, you just have to have a direct relationship with your consumers and shoppers, and it's so important you do that. And there's lots of ways you can do that. That's not what we're talking about today, but that's, that's the biggest lesson for me is to think about it. Imagine they, they're spending $150 million on marketing, whereas it just cost them $145 million to make it. And are you doing anything close to that? Are you, are you spending as much on your marketing as you are on the actual ingredients of your product? Are you spending as much on marketing as you are all the other um, aspects that go into making your product? You want to think about that. It's, it's really important for the growth and health of your business uh, down the road and to scale it. This is an important area. The next item that I'd, I'd like to uh, mention or discuss, you think you see their advertising everywhere, but they were very specific. So they made a decision and they chose, it was a simple, simple one. They chose children, parents, and the nostalgic adults as their focal point uh, for all their marketing advert, um, activity and, and promotions. So you think, they, you think you saw them everywhere. They were wildly successful with their ad programs. You think, oh, they just have a big budget, but they don't. 
What they did is they focused specifically on vehicles that would get them in front of children on areas of uh, advertising, marketing, promotion vehicles that would get them in front of parents and then nostalgic adults. And they had this down, it was almost down to a science. It is an art, but they had a lot going on. They had a lot of support. They had a lot of people working on this behind the scenes. Now, that's, um, that's not the scale of what they, they did is not what we're talking about today. Because in your food business, um, it's going to be difficult for uh, any any food, um, new food entrepreneurs to compete on the scale that the Barbie movie did. What's important is, are, is the activity. So think about that they chose, that they actually chose an avatar of a customer, a consumer. And so are you doing that? So, so many food entrepreneurs I talk to, so, so many that I begin working with, I often hear, does everyone love your product? Does your food product go with everything? And I hear that so often. So that's not the way that we're going to build a business. That's not the uh, most success. We want to find the low-hanging fruit. We want to find the most likely consumers that are going to purchase our product, and we want to focus on them specifically as we're starting and building a business.